It's on pedal box. You get to see if we actually finish our rear suspension. Are we going to put the wheels on the ground? Is Chris going to be happy? Are we going to pick something different to work on? Who knows? It's all the well, mystery. I do, because I've finished editing it by this point. We've been busy with cosmetics here. We've plated over all of our suspension turrets. This is just thin sheet metal just designed to keep water out. It's not really there for structural reasons. We've also put a couple of other little smoothing panels in on some of our other arms, just clean things up a bit. We've primed over everything, so it's all looking quite nice. And we've also clearanced our turrets to fit the wheels in. In the last episode, we noticed that the skirt around the suspension turret here was a massive interference fit with our tire. So we've compressed our suspension as far as it can go by unmounting the coil over from the bottom of the hub. So this can now collapse completely. So we're sitting on the bump stop and we've got precisely one little finger of room around the top of the tire. So we're all good there. Now that leaves the linkages. Yes, once again, the upper control arms are giving us problems. Now, a couple of people have asked us why we're not using a nice, simple wishbone on the back of this car, like you would use on the front or like many people use on the back, sensible people that we're not. Now, a nice solid wishbone with two pivots is great at moving up and down like this. Fantastic. But our hub is mounted at the front, so it also pivots forward. In order to have something that pivots like that, it has to come apart, which means that something has to give and a solid wishbone doesn't work. So how do you get around it? Well, you have arms that allow things to move and it basically creates a trapezoid, which will operate around the top of our hub. Fantastic. Once again, problem solved. Unfortunately, if you put so much adjustability and freedom of movement that every single point has a big adjustable rose joint on the end of it, nothing stays still. It had been staying still when we'd been building it and it had been nicely positioned, but by the time you get a weight of a wheel and a gr the ground to push against and you jump up and down on the suspension, it finds its own level and it finds its own natural resting point, which you can work with and that's okay, up until your resting point has a bolt running straight through your brake caliper. So how do you solve a problem like wobbly suspension? Well, you remove bits and you bolt it in place so it can't move as much. We've taken a piece off one of our original test arms that we built when we were building this very arm about four months ago, and we've mounted it back into place, although we have cut a little bit more off. We've also removed the front half of our upper suspension because we just don't need it. It always seemed like the right thing to do to have a wishbone type setup in the top, but we didn't need it because the rear trailing arm mount deals with all of the forwards and backwards forces on the arm that a wishbone would otherwise try and constrain. So with fewer components, this joint actually becomes an awful lot smaller. We no longer have a pivot this long that comes through and when it eventually tries to bend down will interfere with the brake caliper. We can actually move this bolt around this way, although at the moment it does try and fall out, so that it's even smaller and we keep out of the way of everything we need to avoid around here. But we still have all of the constraints that we need and we still have all of the control that we need and all of the adjustability that we need in these arms. Fantastic. It does mean that we have two spare arms that we now no longer need at all. We're not going to bother cutting the mounts off, but we can reuse the other arms elsewhere. Well, this is the original front subframe out of our A3 donor car. We're not going to use very much of it. We're going to bin out the entire actual subframe itself. We're going to keep the lower control arms so we don't have to make those ourselves. We're going to keep the steering rack, hopefully, see if we can lean that back to be more compatible with our geometry. We're going to keep the anti-roll bar if we can make that work. And that's pretty much our lot. So we're going to roll this back under the chassis now and see roughly where it works in terms of track width and, uh, and wheelbase. Now we've set the front subframe here with one fairly good reason. It turns out with the way we've constructed the back of the car, it's about 20% wider than the rear end of a normal patron. We figure to keep everything roughly proportional, we ought to set the wheelbase about 20% longer than a standard Catrium. It keeps roughly the same sort of width to length feel. Now that means, because the rear wheels are hanging so far out the back of the car compared to normal, that the front wheels are actually further back as well, just not as far further back as the rears are. So we're currently lined up with the front hookup of our new lower arms, is going to be coming onto about where the rear hookup was on the original suspension. So we're going to have a little bit of overhang here that we might remove, we might not. We'll figure that out another time. Something you might have noticed here, though, is that the body is currently super high. We've got it lifted up at the minute to clear the steering box. But even with the body sitting quite high up, the struts are obviously still miles up in the air. So obviously we're going to be removing these and doing something custom, much like we have on the rear. Now, you might have noticed the attachment points here, the pivots for the lower 
radius arms here are quite a lot wider than the bottom of our body. What we're planning on doing here, rather than build out a big extension out the side to reach to them like we had to do on the rear, we're just going to widen the body out. So we're going to cut these sections out of the body and instead we're going to replace them with sections that come out in line vertically with the top piece. So the body, instead of sort of tapering in at the bottom, is just going to be vertical all along here. So we're going to relocate the mounts to here, get the radius arms fitted directly to the body, get rid of the subframe. So that needs a bit of disassembly first and we'll get on that now. This right here is the original subframe from our donor car. Now we're not using it, but we would like to keep fairly close to the original geometry. So we're paying attention to the suspension arm hookups here and here. Now it's constructed kind of annoyingly. These ones here are a vertical through bolt that drops in through the chassis. And these two run forward and backward. So it's a little bit of a pain to rebuild. Um, but basically what we want to do is build some kind of frame that ties these suspension points at this width together. The other issue that we've got putting it on the bottom of the car is that the bottom of the car is a lot narrower than the top. You can see it tapers in quite a lot at the bottom. So we're going to cut all of that out and build a newer, wider frame that's vertically in line with the top half to attach these hookups into. Now these stubby little wings here are our lower suspension arms, so our hubs are eventually going to fit onto the ends of these. Now we've got them fitted up on the top here, clamped onto the original body, to make sure that although we think we've got our measurements right, we actually need to make sure that it's the same kind of wonky as the original framework. So now that we've got it vaguely tacked in place and kind of looking good, we're going to get a reinforcement brace in across the centre here, and then we can start moving this down into the bottom of the chassis. This is our newly completed replacement chassis. So this replaces the entire bottom at the front end. It needs to be a bit longer, but we'll deal with that later. The main thing that we've added is these brackets onto each side because the back of the suspension is held on with a through bolt. And whilst we can bolt all the way through the bottom of here and come out the top, it still allows for a little bit of play. And that's not really that great. So we've added these structures on, which have the bolt going through this, this corner and it just stops it moving around at all. So this is now really solidly located, or at least as much as it can be in a rubber bush. And now we're back one more time. It's coming up to winter and we're gonna cut more bits off the car. We did exactly the same last year. Let's hope it doesn't take another 12 months. Yep, it's a lot shorter to list to tell you what we're keeping than it is to tell you what we're removing. We're keeping these main outside structure here. We're losing everything else. So these in between pieces here, everything on the bottom and these vertical spars here. So we're keeping just the outer top frame and these two diagonal reinforcing bars here. So this is going to be a lot smaller in a minute. One thing I'm pretty certain is that steel shouldn't leak. So that's another major milestone. We've cut the front of the car off to match when we cut the back of the car off. Both done at the end of the year and we're going to put it all back together again. I'm not quite sure why the top of the chassis was so full of water considering that was actually completely sealed. That must have been welded up full of water 
when we got it because there's no holes anywhere in the back of this tube or this tube that that could have got in since then. We did end up cutting a little bit more off the front than we were originally planning just because we decided there was no point really keeping the extra taper at the front when in all likelihood we're going to be extending it square at the front to encompass more bits of radiator and generally more structure around the front. So this is where we're at. We need to tidy all this up now, get all of the extra little bits of crap off, trim this back under here. Now we can start putting a new bit in.